Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. Today, we're chatting with my new friend, Bob Lodick. I have followed Bob for many years uh, through his blog. And that's one of the things that's really, really cool about having a podcast. You get to invite really cool people on there and get to know them personally. So that's um, a definite pleasure of mine to be able to meet Bob uh, finally after following him for so many years. But um, he started out similar to me, lost his job in 2008 and went um, and did blogging full time from there. He really sensed the Lord telling him to go full time with his blog. And at the time it was making like a hundred dollars a month. So he's wondering how in the world was he ever going to make that work, but God blessed it. He was obedient. And now he has courses. He's writing a new book called simple money, rich life. He is a financial expert and uh, he just teaches people real money methods. He's got a course called the real money method and very simple things on budgeting, giving. He talks a lot about giving. I've learned a ton from him. It's just about his heart for giving and it just really challenged me in our own giving. But I know you're going to enjoy this episode with Bob. We've talked about you know things like how to follow an idea, how to know when to quit an idea, how to know when to pivot, um, how to hear from God. Even I asked him about how he knew that way was God talking to him and telling him um, to make a big giving move. And this had a lot of fun chatting with Bob about um, his new book, his business journey. I know you're really going to enjoy this and grab his new book. It's called again, simple money, rich life. There'll be a link in the show notes. He's got a three day money challenge that I want all of you to grab. And so here is my interview with Bob. Hey, Bob, welcome to streams of income radio. Appreciate you being Thank here. You. Thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate it. It is an honor to be here and super excited to chat. It's my honor. I've been following you and I know a lot of people probably say that come up to you at meetings or places you speak at or church. They have been following me, following me for years and I actually have been. I think one of the first things I saw or read was um, a post. I know you wrote a book about um, how to monetize a blog. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think it was um, the, a blogging article that I had bookmarked. Yeah. And I saved and anybody, anytime anybody would say, how do I monetize a blog? I'd say, just go right here. So yeah. I probably sent you five or 10 people. <laughs> over well, I appreciate years. that. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, that was like one of the first kind of big articles that put me on the map. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like, it was 2009. I had turned my blog into a full-time income, which was wow. pretty unique at that point. Yeah. And I wrote everything I knew about it in one big article, ultimately <laughs> turned it into a Kindle book, <laughs> threw it up on Kindle as an experiment. And then it sold a bunch there. And so, I bet you're probably still selling that, aren't you? Yeah, I just got a Google alert um, a little <laughs> bit ago. Somebody, somebody on Reddit was talking about it and my, so my name came up. So oh it is gosh. funny like how that stuff just can last a long time. It is. It's awesome that it just has a life. It just stays there and you'll continue to get paid from it after, yeah. years after you did that. For those listening, it's called How to Make Money Blogging, How I Replace yep. My Day Job and How You Can Start a Blog Today. So maybe we'll talk about that. I don't, I have a blog. It's more of a place, a repository of information. Uh, but I know there's people here that are listening that do have a blog and would, I always try to think, Bob, like, what is my audience? What would they want to ask if they were in the room here? So, yeah, but I love hearing people's stories. And before we hit record, I was saying that ours is a little bit similar as far as the, the year that we uh, ventured into this thing called entrepreneurship. But what is your story? And, and even maybe going back before 2008, like, did you... When did you know that you wanted to do something uh, for yourself? Yeah. Uh, I don't know when it started, but I do know as a, once I got into corporate America for, I don't know, a couple of years, I realized, wait a minute, uh, I, I just don't fit here. This is not yeah. my, this is not my place. Uh, Cause I had all these lofty ambitions of climbing the corporate ladder and, mm -hmm. you know, having the corner office downtown and all that stuff. Like that was where I wanted to go. And once I got in, I'm like, this is not. Yeah, the world I want to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's when I began kind of desire, or desiring to do something myself. But I know for many years, kind of stuck in that world, feeling trapped, like mm -hmm. I, people would 
I, I would tell people I want to start a business and I say, oh, well, what do you want to start a business about? I'm like, I don't care. I just want, I just want to run a business. I don't even care what it's about. Like, I just want to be running my own business. Yeah. And, um, and it took a few years, like, uh, and just a lot of prayer and mm-hmm. yeah, just working through things, um, with God to kind of get to that point where that whole thing kind of unfolded. But yeah, uh, but yeah, it was about 2007 in my case. Um, I kind of started the blog 2008, uh, okay. our you started old, the blog before you got laid off. Yeah, I did. Okay. So I started okay. in 2007 and, mm-hmm. you know, was okay. working five, 10 hours a week on it, mm-hmm. making next to nothing, you know, mm-hmm. it was pretty hard to earn a living from a blog back then. Yeah. Uh, and so at that point, um, yeah, I was just kind of going on it. And then our company, it was during the old 2008 financial crisis. And mm-hmm. I worked for a financial services firm. They got bought out by a bigger one. It was just like mm-hmm. big fish, eat smaller fish, eat smaller fish, like all the way down. Um, wow. So they just eliminated our entire department. And so we've got a pink slip. So I start looking for another job and I sense the Lord saying, nope. Yeah. Nope. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> well then what? And I just sensed him leading me to kind of do this blogging thing full time, which yeah. felt insane. Um, <laughs> my last month before I went full time as a blogger, we made a hundred dollars from the blog after working on it for almost a year. Wow. And I'm like, this is mm. just so nuts, so insane, makes no yeah. sense. Mm. And you know, that's the amazing thing though. Like when you follow God out into the yeah. unknown, when you step out of the boat, like Peter did or whatever, like yeah. He doesn't ask you to do that unless there's something really cool there. Yes. And so in our case, uh, you know, it was nine months later, you know, and we just watched our income go up nine months later, we were earning more from our business than, um, my old day job. Incredible. And six months later, we had doubled that. Like it just, mm. it, you know, made absolutely no sense. Um, but yeah, it was just what God had for us. And so that's where we went. Wow. Okay. Besides obviously God's favor on it. And him just, you know, you follow and being obedient. What are the steps you took to, because I think we could probably take that even uh, the, some of the things you did to grow your blog would be similar to somebody who would be wanting to grow a YouTube channel mm-hmm. or their email list. What are those practical? Because I also want to get into, uh, that's fascinating just hearing, because um, I'm the same way. I, I pray. I, I cannot do anything without him. He leads me, guides me. He gives me business ideas. So I'd love to talk about that too, but yeah. um, it's taking that step of faith. Um and how you knew it was him. Cause there's people that listen that may not be at that level they they want to be there, but how do you hear from God? But okay. The practical stuff you did to grow it besides God's favor all over it. What do you feel like would contribute in the natural, your own efforts to it the most? Yeah. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I want to, I, I think we'll try to like hit some of the principles because some sure. of the specific tactics, I think just aren't relevant anymore. So okay. for example, uh, one of the things that one of the really unique favor things that kind of happened that I think was a contributing factor. Um, so stepping back, me getting the blog off the ground, my mentor um, was an SEO expert. Mm-hmm. And so he taught me a lot about, you know, SEO and yes. SEO in 2007, 2008 was a bit different, a bit easier yes. than it is today. But, right. but you know, the, the basic principles, I think, still remain. But um but anyway, you know, a big part of it then, and even still now is link building and getting mm-hmm. good links, um, you know, mm-hmm. to specific pages on your site to get capture traffic to them. So one of the things that happened during that kind of nine month window, as I was trying to make a full-time living for my mm-hmm. blog was God opened some door of some big press release company reached mm-hmm. out to me and said, Hey, we're doing this really special, unique program with a handful of bloggers where we're going to give you a free press release, $400 okay. value like every okay. week. And wow. so anyway, so what that allowed me to do was kind of create press releases for each article that I wrote each week. Oh, that's awesome. And in many cases get 50 or hundred different links. Um, and mm. it, you know, so it, it was the equivalent and for as long as it ran, I don't remember, I think it ended up being a couple of years, like the equivalent of, you know, maybe $20,000 worth of, um, publicity or whatever. That's incredible. That was completely free for me. Um, wow. you know, but one of the things that I think, uh, you know, cause that obviously was a one-off whatever, but sure. one of the things that I did that I think, um, fundamentally is still valuable regardless mm-hmm. of what you're trying to build, you know, mm-hmm. was I've always been pretty good at throwing things up on the wall, seeing what sticks and then yeah. pouring all my energy into what's working. Oh, that's good. Because I, I think that's what we have to do Yes. As we start a YouTube channel, whatever, Amazon, um, FBA, like whatever the thing mm-hmm. may be, any kind of business, like 
you got to try stuff, see what's working. And there's this balancing act of Mm -hmm. sticking with it long enough to Mm -hmm. see if it's moving forward, but not sticking with it too long, you know, to be stalled from actually reaching your ultimate goal. Wow. I want to ask you about if you have an idea of where that point might be, because I have people to ask me that question. So I'll write that down for later. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, (laughs) it's a really tricky balance that I, you know, and I think it's different in different situations, but giving you an example with our blog that I remember along these lines, um, so we were working on, and this was, I don't know, was eight or nine years ago, a while ago now, mm-hmm. we're working on growing our Facebook page and really growing our Facebook traffic. Mm-hmm. At that point, Facebook was pretty important source of traffic for a lot of people, a lot of um, blogs and businesses. Mm-hmm. And so we were doing that and we had spent probably, I don't know, three to six months, like just a lot of effort trying to grow our Facebook traffic. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the end of that, I, st- I went through our Google Analytics and was just kind of looking at all of our traffic sources, trying to see, you know, what's going on here. And I noticed, hmm, whatever. At the time, I, we were getting 10 or 20,000 visits a month or something from Facebook. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I saw Pinterest right below that. And we were getting, whatever, seven or 8,000 visits a month from that. And I'm like, we haven't done anything to try to get traffic from Pinterest. <laughs> and we're getting nearly as much after we've spent three to six months working uh, like a lot of energy on Facebook, uh-huh. like, all right, we're going to shift all of our energy, then went to Pinterest. Yeah. And within six, 12 months, like we were getting half a million visits a month. From wow. Pinterest. Um, and so like, that's the power of like focusing on, you know, the thing that's sticking on the wall a little bit. Yes. So that, that's always been a lesson where it's like, I'm that's always good. trying to think like that. Like what, what are those things that are kind of working that I might not have even tried to put any energy into? Mm. You know what I mean? What is sticking to the wall? That's good. Because a lot of times right now, people, if they have a podcast, how do I, how do I get traffic? How do I get people to find anything that I'm selling or yeah. any, any information or whatever? It's, you know, you have options like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all these things and Clubhouse. Like, should I be on all these? Like, no, probably not. Yeah. You know, let's focus on one. Where's your audience? And just focus there. But that's awesome. You had Google Analytics. Yeah, let me add exactly. another piece. Let me yeah. add another piece here that I think might be helpful. Um, so, the other area, and this is part of what we talk about in this, this new book, Simple Money, Rich Life, is this idea of um, working with your natural gifts, working with how mm-hmm. God has gifted and created you. And so that was one of those unique things with Pinterest that set us apart a little bit. So there's a story that we talk about in the book by, um, uh, what's his name? Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert. And he says, he said, there's two paths to an extraordinary career. He said, number one, you can be the best in the world at something. Mm-hmm. And so this is Elon Musk. Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, whatever. And he said, that's really difficult to be the best in the world at one particular thing. But he said, there's another path that most people don't consider. Whereas you can be um, in the top 25% at two Mm. or three things combined. And he Mm. said, when you do that, that's a whole lot more realistic. And so he gave his example and he said, you know, I'm not the funniest guy, but I'm funnier than average. Um, He said, I'm not the best artist, but I'm better than average. And he said, I don't know the most about business, but I'm better than average. And when I combine those three things, Mm. I created Dilbert and it set me apart and made me different. And so in the case of the blogging thing, it was the same thing for me. Like I wasn't the best writer. I I didn't know the most about money. I wasn't the best marketer, but that combination of the three together gave me a unique combination. So all that back to Pinterest, um, part of what helped us set, uh, set us apart there was I'm not the best designer, but I have a little bit better eye for design and what looks good than average. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not the best copywriter, but I'm a little bit better than average. And, you know, and a couple other kind of things all came together for us to be able to create some content on Pinterest that worked really yeah. well and getting yes. a lot of traction. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. I've never heard that before. The three things that you're combining those two to three things that you're better than an average and that could be your thing. Wow. Wow. That's so good. Um, let's go back to that balancing act just for a second. There's some, sure. we could go so many different ways. I need to have you on about three or four more times. Uh, yeah, as long as you want, man. The How to follow an idea. Dan Miller talks about if you have a podcast, his, in his opinion, do it for a year. Um, Mm -hmm. commit to it, do it consistently. If you have a blog, he'd say, commit to it for a year. Um, and, and that's, I mean, that's his, his his advice. What do you, and it might be different for every person. And I know you could bring in the whole thing and just pray about it. You know what the, what is the Lord telling you to do? Um, cause that trumps everything else. But what would you tell a person who's saying, I've been doing this thing for four months, six months, eight months, and it just doesn't seem to be 
doing because if you had quit early, there would have been a whole lot more pe- a lot of people that wouldn't be blessed by what you guys are putting out. So how do you walk somebody yes. through that and help them decide when is the time to, and I don't see when it, even quitting is not bad. If you're pivoting to something else, like yeah. this didn't work. Cause I've, there's so many things that I've tried that haven't worked. Yes. Yeah. I quit those. And I found things that yeah. have worked and I've gone all in on those. So yeah, when is have the to. proper time to quit um, or yeah. to like, no, let's just see this out a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, what's really tricky. Like I, so there's a chart on that um, article that you read the uh-huh. ebook, whatever now, uh, where I showed my earnings basically over the two year period at that point in mm-hmm. the first year, it's like, we're basically flat. Yeah. And, and it was really like that with almost all the numbers, like the traffic was the same way, whatever yeah. the number of comments or whatever, like whatever mm-hmm. people were measuring stuff by at that point. But, uh, I, I, you know, wrote in there that I believe this is part of the foundation. Like that was part of the foundation building that I, I couldn't have come to the next part had I not laid that foundation over all those years. I mean, I know mm-hmm. that that work that's accurate in terms of SEO perspective, but mm-hmm. I think that probably applies to a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you could make that same case for podcasts and whatever, but yeah, it, at the end of the day, you're right. It's really difficult um, to be able to say, um, yeah, like I, I agree with Dan. I think that makes a lot of sense, like committing to a specific amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think within that, like you can look, you know, so the way that I would approach that is, all right, we've done, we've committed to a podcast for six months or 12 months or whatever the thing is. But mm-hmm. at that six month point, look back at the last episodes, which ones have performed the best? Mm-hmm. Like which ones have you, and, and it doesn't necessarily need to be just about the numbers. Which right. ones have you gotten the most emails about for people yes. who are like, yes, that really resonated with me. Cause that's not necessarily yeah. the same as the one that has the most traffic. Right. But either way, like you can optimize for either one of them based off of that. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Just look at the data and make a decision. Yeah. Um, I'm very, are you an, are you an analytical, oh, being a financial yeah. person, you're an, you're analytical. So you actually looked into the Google analytic, a lot of folks who aren't, you know, the, the C on the disc profile or like don't know yeah. where their traffic's coming from. So, um, it, yeah, you need to dabble so that helpful. a little bit yeah to figure out what uh, what bit, what to do all right i, I don't want to get into the money thing but real quick um i i love how you know you just you know you make prayerful decisions i mean for me that's the key of everything in my whole business my whole totally life agree. um how and we could this is a whole series we could do a whole book we could write there, there are books about hearing from god yeah. for somebody who <laughs> feels like they struggle in that area give them some encouragement yeah. Yeah. So I haven't written a book about how to hear from God, but um, I'll just, you know, take you through my experience. Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, the Bible says my sheep uh, know my voice and voice mm-hmm. of stranger they will not follow. And I think there is something like just, you know, I've walked with God from basically age 13. I'm going on yeah. about 27 years now. Yeah. And just over those years, or let, let me say this. I think this is the most helpful thing I ever heard is that it's God's responsibility to let me know that it's him talking to me. Mm-hmm. It's not, this isn't something that he's dropping on me. It's you, you got to figure out if it's me or if it's the devil or That's your own thoughts, like whatever. It's like, yeah. it's on him. It's his responsibility to make sure that I know it's yeah. my responsibility to respond and not to ignore it and pretend like, no, I don't hear that. No, 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 no. Yes. And so a lot of times, you know, when I do sense the Lord leading me to do something, like one of the things, you know, I tell a story in the book, but I, he led us to give our age as a percentage of our income. It was 31% of the time. We were given about 12%. And it was like, but that was something I could, I felt it in my heart. I didn't yeah. hear an audible voice. Right. I didn't have, you know, Charlton Heston, thus says the Lord. Like, <laughs> but I just sensed it in my right. heart. And it's like, whoa, yes. where the heck did that come from? Like, yeah. I don't think that's my own thought. Right. I don't think it's the devil. I don't think he, you know, he wants yeah. me to be super generous. Like, sure. You know, and so, I could almost deduce it logically, but at the yeah. same time, like there was a peace in my heart, even though it was kind of scary and insane yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. Like it just felt right yes. in my heart. And exactly. And like the combination of that, um, you know, and like, and I'm always, if it's something that like completely goes against scripture or something that's like, all right, that's yes. probably not God, you know, right, but, right, right. um, but yeah. yeah, but like, that's my biggest indicator often is like that's good. a peace when it's scary. And so again, yes. I measure Peter stepping out of the boat to go see Jesus. Yeah. It's like, that's got to be terrifying. But at the same time, like it probably is some sense of, all right, I'm going to be safe. Like mm-hmm. he's got me, you know? Yes. 
That's good. That's a great, I love it. I love hearing other people just talk about that because, because it brings insight into in my own life on that, but that's true. It's just, it's a heart thing. You hear it here. And I would tell people, don't get so discouraged either. Like just keep going, keep, just keep trying, keep believing that you can hear his voice Yeah, and he'll give confirmation yeah. too. If it's something yeah. like, you know, when I was, I won't, this is about you, but real quick, this might help somebody. It'll believe yeah, it for my, for um, there was a period of time when my wife and I were dating and I, she was like, well, I'm not really sure. And I'm like, I know this is right. Either I'm really right or I'm really <laughs> wrong. And so every time I was with her, it was like, yay, this is awesome. And then she'd leave, we'd leave because we had, I was in Indiana. She was here in Texas and like, well, I'm not really sure that you're the w- right one for me. I enjoy hanging out with you. Um, and I, you're awesome, but she just wasn't hundred percent certain. Um, yeah. but I, I, over that period of like three years of just kind of up and down, I had to just know that I, I prayed a lot, a lot more than I ever have in my entire life. Yeah. That God would drop things into my heart, or I'd hear a word from my pastor that I knew is exactly for me. A scripture would jump off the page that kept me like, Ryan, you're on the right path. And yep. you're you're supposed to, you're this is this is what I have for you. I want you to keep believing, keep, you know, keep sowing into that relationship. So yeah, God's good. He'll Great. get you there, especially yeah. if you want to be there. If you, if you, and if guys, if you veer off a little bit, he'll get you back on track. Yeah. So yep. don't stress it. It's so good. Wow. Well, has your um, blog always been about money the very, from the very beginning? Yeah. No, okay. I mean, the whole idea, the original idea was, uh, I remember telling a friend in t- early 2007, probably in January or something, uh, hey, I want to start a website where I talk about the book of Proverbs uh-huh. and kind of what I'm finding in there about money yeah. and like the t- practical stuff that I'm learning right now. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, that's a blog. Like, just start a blog. And I'm like, what's a blog? <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's awesome. And I went home and started a blog. Uh, oh but yeah, gosh. that's where it all started. That's awesome. Well, talk talk to us about money. Let's go into that topic because that's what you guys are here for. You feel like it, you're helping people get out of debt, like you guys have done. You have an incredible story. Um, but let's let's go into that topic. What do you? What are some of the financial things, like the keys to um, to all of that? I mean, yeah, some of the basic stuff that you talk about. We can and people can go find you online, seedtime.com. Yeah and read all of it that you've um, written. And I'm excited about your new book, but let's talk about finances. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is part of it. Like everything we're talking about, this is part of it for a lot of us, you know, um, the income side of the equation. It's like, mm-hmm. it's the opportunity that we have to move the needle the most, you know, yes. there's no limit to how high we can turn that needle. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's like good. This. Um, but, you know, but on the same token, um, <clears throat> you know, one of the other things like I love talking about is kind of optimizing and tweaking the spending side as well. Like mm-hmm. I'm not, our style is not the hyper frugality, like whatever right. reuse, split the toilet paper and whatever type of thing. Like that's not <laughs> how we roll. Um, <laughs> but you know, to each their own, like it, it, for people who want to do that, that's great. But, uh, right. but within that, like I look for really big wins um, mm-hmm. that just don't affect my standard of living that much. And the reality is there's a lot, there's a lot of different things you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and so one of the things we're always recommending, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of listeners are probably are doing this, but I think some of them probably aren't, uh, is actually just literally tracking your money and knowing exactly where things are going. Mm-hmm. Because that simple um, exercise, like, mm-hmm. it, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing how much of a difference it makes, you know. And so there's a, yeah. uh, a quote um, from, I think it's Carl Pearson, who was this old mathematician. And he said, when por- mm-hmm. performance gets measured, um, uh, performance improves. That's how it goes. When uh-huh. performance gets measured, performance improves. And so just knowing that, like we can apply this. And so, you know, one of the examples I'm always, always using is there's never been a time in my life where I've been on the highway driving and I see a cop on the side and uh-huh. I don't hit the brake. Right. Like that's exactly what's happening. He's measuring my performance and I automatically improve. Yes. Like it doesn't, I, I don't have to think about it. I don't, yeah. even if I do look at the speedometer, I'm still going to hit the brake because I'm being measured. Mm-hmm. And it's the same mm-hmm. way with our money. When we see what's going on, mm-hmm. we spend less without even trying. And this is yes. the thing that's so mind blowing. Like we've had people, students go through this over and over again and try yeah. this out. It's like, you spend less money. It's the same, like the food journal thing, the same way where yeah. you write down everything you eat. You don't even have to try to eat better. You will just yeah. automatically eat better. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anyway, so it's just a simple thing, but like, yeah can make a big difference. And then that might free up two or $300 a month for you that you can yeah. then give or invest mm-hmm. or do something else with rather than wasting it on frivolous stuff that you don't even remember, you know, two weeks later. That's so good. Yeah. 
What about what? What's your advice for budgeting for people who are entrepreneurs that their income goes up and down? Like, you know, I'm sure yours does too. I mean, you probably have. You could probably look back and see, like, it's it's never below this, or very rarely below this. Um, yep. So, how do you budget on? And we don't. Most of the people listening to this aren't. A lot of them aren't at a regular job anymore. They're entrepreneurs, and yeah. it goes up and down. Yeah. So the the I mean, I, a couple of things. So number one. This is a really difficult problem to solve. Um, it's not a one size fits all solution, mm. but I will tell you what has worked best for me um, because yeah, it's been whatever, um, 15 plus years now we've been doing this mm-hmm. and we've lived that the up and down and, and figuring out how to budget. Like, you know, I, we've reviewed whatever dozens of budgeting software on our site. Like we, yeah. we have to be able to figure this out. So <laughs> the solution that we've come to is essentially, um, well, stepping back, the, the reason the truth is it's so much easier for paycheck employees to budget. It, it just is like, it's unfair, yeah. but it's, it's just easier. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the downsides and the challenges of us being entrepreneurs having fluctuating income. But because that's easier, like what we need to do is figure out a way to mimic the paycheck, mimic mm. having a paycheck and find a way to do that. And so what we've done, um, and I'll, I'll try to make this not go too in the weeds with this uh, just for this podcast, but the gist of it is, we take um, our average income um, mm-hmm. based on how variable it is and then multiply that by say 0.8 or something to create a conservative average of how much we think we're going to earn. And then we budget off of that amount. Mm. That makes sense. And then that yep. way, anything that's over that in a given month, we put into a buffer account, a savings mm. account, just sit there until we have that's a good. lower month that's lower. And then we draw from that. And so then that buffer account becomes, you know, where the extra is going or where the extra is coming from if we need it. Interesting. That's awesome. What's your favorite budgeting tool? Um, it's our, it's our product that we have. Yes. <laughs> so we have a, we have a um, class where we teach yeah. people how to budget using our method. It's called the real money method. Yep. But the gist of it is we budget with our actual bank accounts. And so, because we had used all the apps and everything, and um, we just found that they weren't actually holding us accountable. And so, like, the screen would turn red when we overspent, yes. but it wasn't like real accountability. And so, we built a system where we're just budgeting with our bank accounts. And um, mm. anyway, and so that has worked so well for us. And so, yeah. so that's what we use. That's what we recommend. But yes. um, within that, YNAB is a really popular one, but mm-hmm. um, we personally don't use it and don't love it. Yeah, but, you got um, your own. Yeah. yeah. No, we're here. I want you to promote your stuff for sure. Yeah. <laughs> while you're, we're here. I, I wouldn't have you on if I didn't believe in what you guys are doing. Um, I appreciate you, that. you mentioned um, in a, on a blog that you actually budget your giving. And so yeah. do you ever have, um, and that's just, I don't, and um, let me, I don't want to ask anything. It's too personal or whatever. No, is it for anything it. from the buffer account ever go into giving to, and as you feel led, or is it basically pretty much just from the, from the, the budget? Yeah. So we, um, yeah, so this is a game changer. Like for anybody who doesn't like giving and just always like, feels like I want to give, but uh, like, this is the game changer. Like you literally create a budgeting category and put money in there each month specifically for giving. Like once it's in there, it's not yours anymore. And when you Mm -hmm. do that, it's so liberating. It's so empowering. Uh, It feels like you're giving away someone else's money. Yeah. And like that one single thing made giving so much more fun for Lynn and I, it was just yeah. a game changer. Yeah. So within that, you know, to kind of get to your question. So, like I said, we've been given our age as a percent for income for well, the last nine years or so now. Wow. And, um, and so what we do is we break off, um, you know, and I don't have the exact percentage off the top sure. of my head, but basically sure. it's about 17%, I think it's going to a local church and then we're going to mm-hmm. some other organizations. And then we have a percentage of that, maybe 7% or something goes to this actual um, giving account. Mm. And that is where we just, any like, kind of spontaneous thing that comes up, if it's a GoFundMe, we feel led to support, yeah. whatever, you know, like that's where Love all it. of that gets drawn from. And it just, it makes giving so much fun. Yes, it does. Giving for me is one of the most fun things in the world to do. I love yeah, it. It really is. <laughs> it's such a when joy. When you do it right, it just is. Yeah. It really is. My goodness. I, especially, I mean, I'll get emails from people now. I shouldn't say this, but you know, people really, somebody's really struggling. I'll give them access to my course. I mean, if they yeah. really need it and, and I'll be honest, Bob, it's for me, it's, a, I, I will give everything away and you can't do that as a business. There's a balance between making yeah. somebody pay for something. They value it. Um, but I'm, a, you're, we're both givers. So I'm sure you probably yeah. have had that, <laughs> that problem 100%. before, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is a tricky balance because, like, I mean, I'll just tell you, this is another kind of piece of this. Uh, we've had products on our site that we've given away for free, 
mm-hmm. that, um, you know, maybe some people would send an email and say thanks or whatever. And then we started charging for them. And then whoosh, we have so many more people who are like, yes, this is awesome. This is amazing. Wow. Been there all along. You just right. pay for it and actually value <laughs> you just started it. started charging for it. Um, and another funny anecdotal thing, we, we had somebody who um, basically, I don't know, their friend gave them access to our course or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, which we don't, we don't really... Yeah, we're not Nazis about that. Sure. Um, but it's not like we're telling people to do that. It's like, you know, yeah. we're trying to feed our kids. I like, appreciate it if you exactly. buy the course and not give give it to everybody else. But right. anyway, so the guy emailed me and said, Yeah, I just want to pay for this course because I know if I do, I'm actually gonna do it and take it seriously. Wow, that's true. And so, like, all right, great. It's mm. so like, yeah, mm. so people know that too. Like, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. When you guys decided to give your age back when you went jump from 12% or whatever you said it was to 31%. Um, I know our fa- we're big fans of RG Letourneau and yep. you mentioned the, the quote about, you know, um, about the shovels when God, um, you try to give us, you try to give God, but he has a bigger shovel than you. Yep. He will always, you can't yep. out give, give God. Incur- I want, cause I want this to encourage people who they giving their age might be something that most people aren't going to do. They, some folks aren't even at the level where they're tithing yet. And I totally you know, at least start there, but for somebody that feels like, gosh, I got to give, I know I feel like I'm already struggling with my money now to give 10% back. Um, feels like there's a big sticking point there, but you guys yeah. made that leap into well, talk. What what was the result of that? What did God do in your personal life and your business to allow you to get to be able to give thirty one percent? Yeah, yeah. So part of what we're trying to do, you know, with what we're doing with this book, like we're, uh, like I want to encourage, inspire people to give into generosity, but not, mm-hmm. I don't, not through the same, like because we all hear about this every week at church. Like anybody's mm-hmm. going to church, like you know, every Sunday at offering time, like you're hearing about it, and so yeah. I, I don't want to, we don't need to say the same thing. Like, so my angle is I, I want to inspire people on how amazing of a life it is, how like mm-hmm. the amazing adventure that God can bring you on through yes. all this. Yeah. And so coming back to this age as a percentage thing, like, so getting a little bit more into detail, that story. So I was up yeah. praying in a field where I used to go to pray to. Uh-huh. And the reason I went to God and started praying was because I wanted to get our house paid off. Mm-hmm. And so we had paid off all of our other credit cards and everything else like that. And so that morning I'm sitting in the field praying saying, God, I want to get our house paid off faster. Like I had a plan with the amount of available income. It was probably going to take about four years to get it paid mm-hmm, off mm-hmm. in which it's great. Like that's amazing, sure. but I'm, I'm a, a microwave American. Like I, I want yes. it quicker, you know? So <laughs> I'm praying to God, like, can we do this faster? Yeah. <clears throat> and that's when I sensed him speaking to my heart mm-hmm. and I s- just sensed him say, if you, re- if you want to see me really move on your finances, I want you to begin giving your age as a percentage of your income. Wow. And so, uh, you know, and I remember being up there and just like scratching my head and just be like, this is insane. Like how I, yeah, I didn't even know if we could even do this. I didn't know if we'd be yeah. able to pay the bills. Like I had no idea how it was going to work out. Yeah. You know, and I went back home, talked to Linda, she got on board um, and yeah. she, you know, it's really great, you know, for when you have a champion um, spouse who Absolutely. can get on board. I know that that's not always the case, but did she have to go case, pray about it too, or did she just knew you? She knew you can hear from God and just trusted you. She, she just got on board. Like I don't, yeah, I don't know. Awesome. Like I mean, she might have prayed about it, but um, yeah. but yeah, she yeah. just sensed it was right. That's awesome. All right, okay. I was kind of hoping you'd tell me I'm wrong, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> and right? so. But like we both did, we had, you know, joking aside, we did have an sense of excitement about it Yeah, uh, because it's just this crazy journey to go on. But here's what happened. Here's what's so cool about it though. Um, So that month we decided, all right, let's do this. And and again, like I I had no idea how this was going to play out, Yeah, you know, and under my new calculations, it was probably going to take more than a decade to pay off our mortgage (laughs) because we're basically taking all of our disposable money and now giving it away. Wow. So here's what's crazy, Ryan. We... We started doing that um, within 10 months, uh-huh. not 10 years, not four years, within 10 months, our mortgage was paid off. Oh my gosh. Like, it makes absolutely no sense. And yeah. it's one of those things. It's like, we could have never figured that out in our, in our you know, mm. own minds. Like, yeah. And God was right. Like I thought he was taking us yeah. away from our goal, but he actually did help us to do it faster. Wow. You know, so anyway, that was just one of the things for me where it's like, all right, 
if you ask me, like, I'm going to do it, even yeah. if it seems crazy. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that would be my encouragement to anybody, you know, who, no matter where you're on this giving spectrum, it's like giving your age, like that, that's not for everybody. This is our unique sure. call, what God's asked right. us to do. But, um, but generosity, giving is a biblical thing you can't get away from, mm-hmm. you know? And so my encouragement is even if you're not given a dime, like, let's start with something. Let's start with 1%. Yeah. Let's start, Absolutely. just pray and just see where God can lead you. And, yeah. um, and I think you'll be surprised. Yes. I think you'll be at surprised. Yeah. Well, your your title of your blog, Seed Time, is um that's the principle in the word. I mean, you know, yep. Genesis 26 something. Is it, is it um maybe it's a that's that's Isaac playing in the in the crops in the land and saying like where it comes fold. from? Where's the one um, where's the one that it says the, um there always um, be seed time and harvest? Seed time and harvest will not fail as long as yeah. there are three mains. Yeah, um, it's Genesis eight, I believe. Genesis, okay. Yeah. And so even if I I read a lot, I'm sure you do too, but there's, I read even books from, you know, non-believers as well. And they, those, the most successful people give, and they may not know that they're operating a spiritual principle, but it'll work. If it works for them, how much more should it work for us or sons and daughters of the King? So um, it's just a spiritual principle you give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over something, giving your wisdom. How did, what did that look like? Um, on a practical level, did, did you guys come up with a, a business idea that God gave you that exploded your business or just more income started coming in miraculously? They're like, where did this come from? Or do you remember like just from the, I think our business has really started growing. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, honestly don't remember the details of uh-huh. what happened, but I just, I think we hit like a kind of hockey stick kind That's of awesome. exponential <laughs> growth Yeah, uh, where yeah. Again, I don't know if it was an idea God gave me or sure. um, it was something that just kind of started happening because I mean, yeah. you know how this is like certain, certain things can happen with the website or, or somebody mentions you or Google yes. starts sending you a bunch of traffic or whatever, like that stuff can just happen. And, Absolutely. you know, and I think that God might have something to do with some of that. I think Absolutely. he's big enough that he can <laughs> tweak that algorithm if he needs to or whatever, totally. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. I love this. I want to talk about your new book. What's um? so tell me the title of that and what's, um, and uh, people can sure, get that starting empty, this empty week. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a real one yet. We just have this. So I, <laughs> I made this all day. Simple anyway, money, called, rich life. Simple money, rich life. Achieve true financial freedom and design a life of eternal impact. That's mm. the subtitle they tell me. Yeah. So what's um, in that book? So yeah, it's really just uh, kind of breaking down our story, our last really, I guess it's probably 20 years of, mm. you know, it starts with me being broken down on the side of the road with $7 to my name stranded a thousand miles from home. That's kind of where my whole financial journey starts yes. where I realize, you know, I don't know what I don't know. Like, cause mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing this survey where it said something like 80% of Americans or something like that think that they're good at managing money. Mm-hmm. And yet, you know, we look at what's going on. It's like, there, there's some disconnect here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was one of those people where it's like, I thought I was good at managing money. Like I had worked at a bank. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up wanting to be an accountant. Like I, I had, I was someone who just thought I was good, but I was in an absolute financial mess and Mm. God took me to this breaking point to kind of realize that. And so that was where it all started for me. And then from there, I began digging into the word, book of Proverbs and just reading every book I can get my hand on, you know, at the time, money magazine and everything Uh I could learn about. And, you know, ultimately that led to starting a blog. Mm -hmm. So this book is pretty much the summation of everything we did to kind of get from there um, to the point of now, um, we reached this threshold. We celebrated this milestone just uh, not too, whatever, six months ago or something uh-huh. of giving away a total of $1 million, which was wow. something we were we had been wow. dreaming about for years. Is that since you and Linda got married or since? Yeah. Or, wow, that's yeah. incredible. And so, um, so that was just a really big milestone for us. Yes. And so this book is just kind of like summation of everything we did, like all the practical stuff, but also some of the biblical principles kind of tied in. Yeah. And so it's got a lot of our story. Um, yeah. Mm. So that's the gist of it. Love it. Where can people find you? Um, they can find us at seedtime.com, like a <laughs> seed you plant in the ground yes. and like time, like a watch. Um, yeah. And so we're at seedtime.com on Instagram at seedtime. We have a podcast as well, Seed Time yes. Money. Um, yeah. And so the book, like actually for anybody who's interested, we have a three-day money challenge mm-hmm. um, where... If you're not sure about the book, like you want to just check it out. Like we had three days, three of the most important concepts out of the book. Like we give them to you completely free. So you can just sign up to that. Brian, you can maybe put a link in the show notes or something. Absolutely. If you want. We'll do. And so people can check that out if they want. Cool. Any last parting advice? These are entrepreneurs. So what do you, 
what would you tell them? You're on stage in front of, at my conference, the Streams of Income conference here. <laughs> yes. I hope you're going to do that. Are you doing that yet? I actually, you know, I did, a, I did, I went, so I'm from Indiana in 2020 in February, I did a Streams of Income live event up in Indiana, yeah. had about 50 people come um, awesome. and we haven't done one since. I do lots of conferences for my legends group, um, for our yeah. Amazon group. Um, and, uh, but no, that would be fun. I would yeah. definitely, if I well, do one again, I'll have to there. do it. But yeah, what would you tell entrepreneurs and, and it just what you're talk about and what are you going to tell, encourage yeah, them? I mean, I'll just say this, like part of, you know, and we go into this and in in my heart comes out a lot in the book of what I want, but I yeah. just believe that um, as entrepreneurs, we're uniquely positioned to be able to amplify our income uh, for more than just, you know, collecting Lambos, you know, yeah. whatever. And it's like, if you want a Lambo, great, whatever. Yeah. But my point is there's a higher and better use for it. And when you understand mm. that we can use those funds, we can maximize income for kingdom impact and to mm -hmm. change the world and mm -hmm. rob, rob hell and keep people out of hell. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we can do that. Like yes. we can fund these, all these, um, you know, uh, ministries that are folding, all these not-for-profits are disappearing yes. because they're lacking funding. Like we can have yes. a part in all that. And so that's my um, big encouragement, I guess. Love Let's it. Let's go for it. Thank you so much, Bob, for being on. You're welcome anytime. Anytime you're doing anything, you want to share it, just tell me, hey, I got something I, to promote. I want to come on. I appreciate the on. invite. That's so kind. Of course. So cool. It was an honor to have you. We'll see you next time. I'm here, brother. Honor to be here. All right. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.